we're back. It's women's wear. Get excited. Uh, it's London Fashion Week. Um, and the first show that we have seen today is Asai. Um, super duper exciting um, because it's Asai's first show outside of Fashion East. Um, so there's a lot of hype. Everyone was very excited. There's been a kind of a lot of, a lot of excuse, exclusive articles because ever, everyone has been wanting to see what Asai um, will do on his own two feet. Um, and he did not disappoint. This show was really really spectacular um in my humble opinion um there was such a progression in the styling the color palette it was the kind of prs were warning us as we walked in um saying it's very different um and immediately you're like oh no because it was so fantastic before um but this was different in the best possible way um there were dipped fingers and really earthy tones um, lots of neutral palettes. The fabrications were really key here as well as the cuts and the shapes. So before um, previous seasons, Asai is all about statement looks and tie-dye elements and kind of um, fantastic plays on his Chinese Vietnamese heritage. And those were still here too, but um, much more, I want to say demure, but actually these huge puff jackets and giant puffed shapes, um, I don't know if you could call demure. Um, lots of cord and what you would assume is British fabrications but was actually Japanese um, but lots of beiges and neutral tones which is completely um, uh, left to field from what you normally associate with a Asai which is these kind of nuclear coloured um, hot walk tops which is what he's been rocketed to Instagram fame for um, the hot walk tops are selling in Dover Street I think they have a thing today actually um, and they're super duper popular with influencers and they're all over Instagram which is kind of um, why a size name's been everywhere but this collection was um, a really a real formality away from that it was a real um, move into ultimately wearable clothes and that's what Asai was saying backstage all these um, neutral tones and earthy tones I'm gonna say are feel like a progression from last season because we had the watery travelers last season so they're dripping in blues and um, fabric um, kind of tassels and such and they're traveling through water and now these kind of nomads have really landed and kind of clunked their feet um, into the earth and that's why they've got these shoes that are fluffy all the way around as if as if someone had been trudging through moss and English brogues and so many Britishisms but in a slightly in an in an asai way so it feels as though um these travelers have come from um asia and have gone through the waters and now have arrived in britain and and what does it mean to be british and how how do you integrate and do you put on a mask or do you try and pretend to be slightly more british than you perhaps are at first and there's a little bit of a struggle there so um the clothes are beautiful but there's a really interesting um slightly darker narrative underneath um, and that's why we have dipped fingers um, because the models are as if they've been crawling through clay and they're struggling to um, clamour to get pieces together. Likewise, there's hats that are kind of reminded me of floppy hands, but actually they're an homage to jesters, um, which again is this slightly darker undertone of when you arrive and you have to put, put on this kind of um, enigmatic front um, and you're trying to deal with all these different dualities um, and it's all about um, Imperial Britain so really really interesting dualities beautiful fashion I feel like I've glazed over loads <laughs> but Cal I'm gonna bring you in so that you can I think help it was me. <laughs> I think it was really brave yeah. to do what he did so he's you he's, he's created such a following with those like acid tops and these acid colors and the styling what I thought was really clever about his move forward is the clothes were very visually different, but the styling was similar. Like yeah. the way that the, you did have some of his hot walk fabric down on the knees and yeah. this great, like this, it was styled up with him. So it still didn't feel like a totally different thing. And it still felt very desirable, even though these shapes were more sartorial. You know, we had the closest thing I've ever seen from him to a suit, which was yeah. that beautiful black and white dog's tooth hound's tooth, hound's tooth. Hound's tooth suit with a um, slight kick flare at the back I thought it was su super stunning um, I think it's really good for him to be moving away from not moving away still very much noting it nodding to it from this kind of East London club scene because obviously we all love it because mm. we know it but actually in terms of being an international brand yeah not you know not all women want to wear crazy coloured sheer tops it's very actually you know reasonably hard to wear you need a lot of confidence whereas this 
felt really with a woman in mind, like for lots of different people, and I can imagine yeah. people all over the globe, all ages, really buying into this brand. Whereas before, it felt the kind of coolest thing in London. Yeah. But only really for London. Yeah. Is what I'm I totally felt about it before. And I was super surprised to find that he was even selling to wholesalers last season, just because I didn't think I thought he was making them and selling them for his Instagram. So if this is a, if this is the business path he's chosen to go down, I think it's a really astute move to actually bring these shapes in and bring this woman out of this kind of crazy enigmatic club scene that he's mm. come from. Or it's, it's a club scene, but I actually don't know if he went, you know, not necessarily he went clubbing, but that's where you were seeing the clothes, not yeah. necessarily him. Yeah. But I was seeing his clothes out and about on the street, which gives it a real energy. And he's taken that with the styling, but brought it into kind of this very sartorial in the no woman yeah which is really hard to do so hard to do and and you're right to point out there were the hot walk tops hidden underneath but here in yes. that like kind of neutral brown that was throughout the collection so you kind of blink and you'll miss them yeah no, and the same with yeah. the nunchuck bags which had returned before they were kind of um on almost a play on like takeaway boxes and fun even yeah. fonts but here they were in like straight hounds too so i yeah. almost didn't notice that they were the and they bag. and they were slouchy because before they were quite aggressive yeah. you know, they were two physical nunchucks whereas these were more slouchy and kind of like yeah. throw them on on your way out and put your keys in them whereas before they were heavy hefty 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 things that really changed the silhouette whereas these kind of melded in yeah and I, I just thought it was really beautiful and very romantic which I don't always think of his collections yeah. as this part very romantic slower and there was nowhere to hide and he didn't need to no I thought it was really really exceptional the shapes the fact that he wasn't hiding behind not that he was before but hiding behind fabrications this time it was yeah. literally all about how something curved underneath well as you yeah. say how the bag slouch i just thought oh, yes. what a great show to start on um thank you guys for watching there's going to be lots more um to watch today tomorrow all the way till tuesday and and there on after yeah. until march actually and um, so make sure you subscribe to youtube um, and you can stay abreast of what we're talking about um and when we go live um but thank you guys for watching Bye.